Hello students. Today we will start uh, the Linux system. In the previous uh, session we have uh, done Windows. Now it is Linux system. So here we will speak about the history, design principles, kernel modules, process management, scheduling, memory management, file system, input output, inter-process communication, network structure, security and all aspects of Linux. So this is what is history. Linux is a modern free operating system based on Unix standards. The same uh, uh, lecture I think I have also mentioned in my YouTube channel wherein I have written the uh, uh, handwritten notes have been shared on YouTube. I think those are similar but here we I have made the PPT so I am sharing it now. So first developed as a small but self-contained kernel in 1991 by Linus Torvalds. So this was the first person who developed Linus. So this you should know and understand 1991 by Linus Torvalds with the major design goals of Unix compatibility. Its history has been one of collaboration by many users from all, all around the world corresponding almost exclusively over the internet it has been designed to run efficiently and reliably on common pc hardware so on general pcs it is able to run so this is one of the major part but also runs on a variety of other platforms means like variety of interdisciplinary platforms the core line x operating system kernel is entirely original but it can run much existing free Unix software resulting in an entire Unix compatible operating system free from proprietary code. So this is the Linux kernel. We'll speak about the versions, various versions of Linux kernel here. The version 0 0.01 in May 1991. It came in May 1991. Had no networking. So there was no networking features into it ran only on 80386 compatible Intel processors. It means what is it is 8086 compatible. Uh, 8086 is written as 80386. So, so you must not confuse it. So it ran only on 8086 compatible Intel processors and on PC hardwares had extremely limited device drive support and supported only the Minix file system. Linux 1.0, it came in March 1994, included the new features like it supports Unix standard TCP IP networking protocols, Berkeley software development that is BSD compatible socket interface for networking programming, device driver support for running IP over the Ethernet over an Ethernet enhanced file system, support for a range of SCS SCSI controllers for high performance disk access extra hardware support version 1.2 that is in march 1995 was the final pc only linux kernel so which was capable of final pc only like kernel and it is ha huh, linux 2.01 this is again a different version it released in june 1996 2.0 added two major new capabilities that support for multiple architectures, multiple processing architectures and multiple hardware architectures both. Including a fully 64 native alpha port, it support for multiprocessor architecture even. Other new features included improved memory management code, improved TCP IP performance, means uh, like for example if I am speaking about two uh, about new features uh, one is memory management code means memory management techniques are enhanced into this version and TCP IP management and maintenance or you can say networking features has been improved so that their performance has been increased it's a thought for internal kernel threads for handling dependencies between loadable modules and for automatic loading of modules on demand standardized configuration interface this is again an important aspect of it 
available for motorola 68000 series processors sun spark these are some of the architectures and models for which it is mostly available the linux system the linux uses many tools developed as part of berkeley's bsd operating system again i am saying so there are universities like berkeley and mit which were working with the uh, with respect to some uh, operating system companies or operating system codes like for example berkeley is having its own software development unit so linux uses many tools developed as part of berkeley's bsd operating system mit is x window system and the free software foundation gnu project so all those things which were available with berkeley and the mighty x window system has been taken into linux and it uses as the tools into its operating system the minimum system libraries were started by the gnu project with improvements provided by the linux community again they have taken some libraries from gnu project linux networking administration tools were derived from 4.3 bsd code recent bsd derivatives such as free bsd have borrowed code from linux in return the linux system is maintained by a loose network of developers collaborating over the internet with a small number of public ftp sites acting as de facto standard depositories linux distributions standard pre compiled sets of packages or distribution including the basic linux system system installation and management utilities and ready to install packages of common unix tools the first distribution manage these packages by simply providing a means of unpacking all the files into the appropriate places modern distributions include advanced package management early distributions included sls and slackware Red Hat and Debian are popular distributions from commercial and non-commercial sources. So, uh, as far as I say, Red Hat was the famous among them, and Debian are also popular, also popular among them. The RPM package file format permits compatibility among the various Linux distributions. The Linux kernel is distributed under. the gnu that is general public license gpl the terms of which are set out by the free software foundation anyone using linux or creating their own derivative of linux may not make the derived product proprietary software released under the gpl that is general public license may not be redistributed as a binary only product these are some of the design principles uh, as far as design principles are concerned i had Uh, spoken it in one of the lecture and those are common design principle but for this linux is a multi user multi tasking system with a full set of unix compatible tools so all those tools which were applicable in unix linux also all those tools are applicable and it is multi user and multi tasking system its file system adheres to traditional unix semantics and it fully implements the standard unix networking model so it also adheres to the unix semantics that is rules and regulations semantics all are used from the unix background and the networking model also is the base the linux networking model has been taken from the unix again so main design goals are speed efficiency and standardization so it had uh, mostly worked on speed efficiency and uh, performance or you can say then after then standardization means things should be standardized on different different or heterogeneous platforms linux is designed to be compliant with the relevant posix documents at least two linux distributions have achieved official posix clear certifications the linux programming interface adheres to the svr4 unix semantics rather than to bsd behavior so this is a component these are the components of linux system and this you can say the block diagram of linux system wherein there are four layers so first layer having system management programs user processes i think you may see it here then user utility programs and compilers these are in one layer then there are system shared libraries which actually 
uh, uh, works as intermediary between Linux kernel and this one and the first layer. Then there is a Linux kernel. Then there, is, there are loadable kernel modules or you can say all the hardware device drivers are being accessed by loadable kernel modules. So we can speak each one of them components of a Linux system. Like most Unix implementations, Linux is composed of three main bodies of code. The most important distinction between the kernel and all other components. The kernel is responsible for maintaining the important abstractions of the operating system. Kernel code executes in kernel mode with full access to all the physical resources of the computer. So it actually has the full access to all the physical resources of the computer. All kernel code and data structures are kept in same single address space. The system library is defined a standard set of functions. So now I think you may be knowing these are all the level layers into the block diagram of the Linux system we have just taken up. The system library is defined a standard set of functions through which applications interact with the kernel and which implement much of the operating system functionality that does not need the full privileges of kernel code. The system utilities perform individual specialized management tasks. Now kernel modules, sections of kernel code that can be compiled, loaded and unloaded independent of the rest of the kernel. Sections of kernel code can be compiled, loaded and unloaded independent of the rest of the kernel. So this is a major important point. Kernel code is highly independent in nature. Kernel module may typically implement a device, driver, a file system or networking protocol. This is also important. So module is highly important and can do things in a heterogeneous matter, manner. The module interface allows third parties to write and distribute on their own terms device drivers or file systems that could not be distributed under the GPL. Kernel modules allow a Linux system to be set up with a standard minimal kernel without any extra device drivers built in. And there are three components to Linux module support. One is module management, second is driver registration, and third is conflict resolution. From the name itself it is clear but we will go into the slides and we will try to find out them. So module management is the first one. Supports loading modules into memory and letting them talk to the rest of the kernel. So it actually loads the modules into memory. Similarly like in Windows the information is being loaded into the primary memory so that it can be accessed by the CPU or kernel. Module loading is split into two separate sections. First one is managing sections of module code in kernel memory. Then second handling symbols that modules are allowed to reference. So one is managing section of module code in kernel memory and second is handling symbols that modules are allowed to reference. The module requester manages loading requested but currently unloaded modules uh, but currently unloaded comma modules it also regularly requires the kernel to see whether a dynamically loaded module is still in use and will unload it when it is no longer actively needed. So module management actually works all the things related to execution or all the controls which are related to kernel and the uh, near the kernel and kernel code. So it helps regularly and dynamically in loading and unloading also. Driver registration allows module to tell the rest of the kernel that a new driver has become available. So all the new device drivers or all the new hardwares are being registered through device registration through their device drivers. The kernel maintains dynamic tables of all known drivers and provides a set of routines to allow drivers to be added to or to or removed from these tab tables at any time. So registration tables include the following items. So these are the fields of the table. First one is device drivers or the details of the drivers, device drivers or the name or the number. Then second is file systems. Third is network protocols, which network protocols it will use and the binary format. So these are the four different fields or items. This is conflict resolution, a mechanism that allows different device drivers to reserve hardware resources and to protect those resources from accidental use by another driver. 
the conflict resolution module aims to three there are three task main main task prevent modules from chasing over access to hardware resources prevent auto props from interfering uh, uh, with existing device drivers resolve conflicts with multiple drivers trying to access the same hard